Hi guys and welcome to the uh, Restoration Druid um, changes and reworks for the Battle for Azeroth Alpha. So like I did in the Resto Shaman video, I'm going to be going through the um, the dungeon talents first and then the raid talents. So I'll be explaining all the spells and the changes and whatever and then I'll be going through what talents I pick. So we start off in the first tree you've got scenarium ward so that's been moved up onto the first line protects a friendly target for 30 seconds any damage taken will consume the ward and heal the target for 2500 i don't think this has meant much use you don't really ever want to be taking this due to the fact that if you're going to use it on a tank at the start of a fight a tank should always be on 100 percent so unless the target's going to hit the tank for 2.5k which it rarely does you're not going to get the full use out of scenarium ward so you don't really ever want to take scenarium ward unless you're on a such a hard boss so maybe at the start of mythic progression when bosses are hitting like a truck on the tank this might be useful where they'll get hit by a melee attack and this will just instantly heal heal that what that melee attack did to them but other than that there's not much use for it then there's prosperity which swift men now has two charges and it's cooldown is reduced by three seconds so obviously swift men is just your instant 2k heal on the target so for example that's just a scenario ward but with 5k less so you just big there there we go and there's abundance for each rejuve you have active. Regrowth's cost is reduced by 6% and critical eff effect chance is increased by 6%. Obviously this is good when you have lots of targets, but since we're doing our dungeon talents first, Swift Mend is just the best. Just to instantly heal a target up for 2k, if they take a bit of damage, just instant Swift Mend. Especially if you're trying to keep your um, hots up on all the targets. You know, just having that instant Swift Mend on a target is just really, really good. So for next... It's the same as all the other druids, so wild charge, renewal, and tiger's dash. Like you saw in my other videos, in my boomkin and my feral and my guardian, I always like the tiger dash due to it being just really, really fast and just, yeah, like really, really good. So tiger's dash is just what you want, just the best one to take. Then, yeah, so your next one, it's usual, it's like the affinities. So you have guardian affinity, feral affinity, and balance affinity. I always take guardian affinity as a healer. Just reduce that damage taken by 6%, especially tied in with Bark Skin as well. With the Guardian Affinity and Bark Skin, you're just, you're just not going to... 20%, 6% reduce damage. And also going into Bear Form, like you're just crazy, you're just not going to die. It's just like Druid and Legion, they're really, really, really tanky. And you can maybe put them on a few soaking things, like in um, in Nighthold on Gul'dan, where a, where a Druid could solo uh, the Bond to Fell, which just helped progress. The next one's really down to Purple and Oppressed Fronts. I just like Mighty Bash, due to the fact... I can just go up to an ad and just smash it in the face and stun it and just keep it locked down for the DPS to either kill another ad or kill that ad which I've stunned. Next one, um, Cultivation. When Rejuve heals a target below 60%, it applies Cultivation, healing them for 281 over 6 seconds. This just isn't that useful. 281 health is just not a lot, even in the uh, new update. So you don't really ever want to take Cultivation. I don't know if they're going to increase the healing of Cultivation, but yeah, you just want to keep... Um, you just want to keep, you just don't want to use that basically. So Soul of the Forest, when you cast Swift Mend, you gain Soul of the Forest, increasing the healing of your next regrowth or rejuve by 200%, or increasing the healing of your next wild growth by 75. This is down to personal preference, but I always like taking Incarnation Tree of Life, due to the fact that when you've got this up, no one's going to die. So say if you know there's lots of lots of healing to be done soon, you can literally just pop this and no one's going to die. So you put your, put your rejuves on all the targets and you just spam healing them and they're just not really going to die. And obviously, yeah, you can use your wild growth so everyone gets healed. Uh, just keep them healed up all the time. So if you're next, you've got Spring Blossoms. Each target healed by efflorescence is healed for additional 144 over 6 seconds. I don't like taking this due to the fact that in dungeons, you're more than likely going to have a ranged character. And they're not going to benefit from Spring Blossoms. So you just don't really want to take this unless you know you're going to have a full melee. But more than likely, if you've got a full melee group, you're doing something wrong. Next, Stone Bark reduces the cooldown of Iron Bark by 30 seconds and increases the healing of your, increasing your your healing of time effects by 20%. This is good, but I just like using Inner Peace so much and just having Trank up. You, using Trank on a pack and you're just your group's not going to die. You're going to be healing for so so much. Just Inner Peace is really really good. It's down to personal preference again, but I just really like having Trank up. I like burst healing a lot. It's what I'm used to as a Shaman. Uh, coming from playing Shaman, I just really like burst healing, especially with the prosperity and trank you're just not going to have people dying next one you have flourish extends the duration of all your healing over time effects and friendly targets within 60 yards by 8 seconds and increases 
the rate of your heal over time effects for eight seconds. This is useful, useful, but not really for dungeons, uh, due to the fact that you just don't get the full use out of it. Next wave germination, you can apply reduce twice to the same target. This is good in some circumstances, but moment of clarity is just overall the best. Moment of clarity now affects the next three regroups, and increases the healing by fifteen percent. So seeing as though it's three regroups now instead of one, it means you can put all three of them on different on targets. So you can put one in your tank, one in your healer, one in your you just all of them. So if you look, if you don't know what omen of clarity is, I'll explain it now. Your healing over time effects from life bloom has a four percent chance to cause a clear casting state, making your next three regrowths. Because obviously we have moment of clarity cost no mana. This is just really good because regrowth is going to be healing people so so much, and because you have three free ones, you just, they're going to be getting healed for so so much. So just an example, I'll show you. So I'm getting these procs is giving life bloom to all the targets. So you, what you want to do is just give life bloom. And I've already got an omen of clarity so I can give regrowth to all my targets. And just increase the hops I'm giving them. So it's basically like it was in Legion just with the added moment of clarity. And just the a special burst of prosperity. It just gives that, give, give resto in dungeons just that extra, extra insta heals to keep up with everyone. And the damage incoming. Because the one thing druids lacked and especially in dungeons was they didn't have the burst heals to just... To just survive with all the other healers, like for example, priests, they were really good at hotting, but they had the burst heals, which druids were just lacking. So a few of these talents just allow he druids to have more burst healing. But for a raid setup, you want to go to the classic druid way of just hotting up every single target and just, just, just going crazy with the hots. So you want to take abundance here, due to the fact that obviously you're going to be wanting to put reju reduce on as many targets as possible. Say if you know the melee you're going to be taking a lot of damage, just rejuve all the melee and you're going to get you're going to get so much crit chance of it. It's just going to be crazy. All your hots are going to be critting and whatever. It's just really, really good. Next one, Tiger's Dash again. I just like taking that for speed. Get out, get out of the way of things. Just really, really good. Um, next is down to you again. But maybe um, Typhoon if there's ads. So you can just Typhoon them away. Because obviously you can't bash a boss. Next one you want to take is, um, you want to take your Incarnation Tree of Life again, just for that extra burst healing. And due to the fact that we haven't got, um, we haven't got Prosperity anymore with the Swift Mend, Soul of the Forest just isn't that good, we aren't going to get the use out of it. Whereas Incarnation, we can incorporate it into the healing CDs, so if there's a big damage incoming, you can pop your tree and just heal the shit out of the whole group. Next one, um... You want to take Stonebark all the time. Stonebark's going to be crazy good, especially tied in with Abundance. You're going to have reduce on all your targets. And increasing the healing over time effects is obviously just really, really good. The next you want to take is um, Germination. Due to the fact you're going to get so much use out of this instead of Flourish. Flourish on a 1.5 minute cooldown. But tied in with Germination, like I said, if you know that your melee are going to take loads of damage. You can just double, up, double reduce all of your melee. And you're going to get the use out of Abundance... And it's just crazy, crazy good. So, for example, now you see I have abundance. So, it's just it's just healing everyone up for crazy, crazy amounts. And obviously now, although with Tranks on a longer cooldown, I've still got it. So that if the fight's six minutes, on three minutes I can use a Trank at the start. Then I can use later on in the fight an Incarnation Druid and just have no one dying. So, for, for talents which have stayed, obviously Druids still have Stone Bark, so they can just give it to a target. Still have Bark Skin. Ursul Vor Ursul's Vortex is just baseline spell now. Also, one thing I haven't mentioned in my other druid guides is that Hibernation has come back for druids. So they can CC a target. But yeah, what you want to make sure is doing, putting your um, efflorescence in the melee. And just keeping your hots up on all the targets, especially in raids. Druids are basically the same in raids, but with dungeons there's a bit of a change in that. Obviously with Prosperity, you're going to be using Swift Men's a lot more. And moment of clarity, you want to make sure you're using up all your charges before you start laugh, life blooming up more targets. But yeah, Druid looks promising. I think there's a few tweaks they need to change with some of the um, with the healing numbers because some of them are a bit off. Like Reju, for example, is healing stupidly low when it should be higher. But that's going to be changed in the future. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more guides. And if I've missed anything, comment. And if you think I can make any changes to the videos, then comment. Anyway, see you in the next one.